A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. June 2020 marks the 50th anniversary of the celebration of Pride Month, a month in which we commemorate the LGBTQ liberation movement, both in the U.S. and across the world. The first Pride March honored the one-year anniversary of the Stonewall Uprising, a six-day event of protests against the state's policing of LGBTQ bodies. It was the catalyst of the modern gay rights movement. The black and brown activists of the Stonewall Uprising remind us of how the power of marginalized voices pushed society towards equality and justice. In this episode, Ronald Murray expertly teaches the fundamentals of house dance and ballroom culture, showing us how black and brown LGBTQ communities turned this underground scene in Harlem into a phenomenon that changed mainstream culture. House and ballroom has existed under our noses for about 35 to 40 years. We can trace it back to the Harlem Renaissance of the 1920s. It was a, a culture that evolved out of the dra- Harlem drag scene. Around 1970, the house and ballroom became a voice for individuals who were disenfranchised, rejected, and dejected from their family homes. These individuals found one another and connected together to become a unified voice. For many people in the house and ballroom scene, the houses became who they were. So physically, what happened, somebody became a mother figure or leader, and this person became the father or the mother and collected children around them or her and provided a safe space for them, a safe space that their biological parents should have provided for them. And so they taught them different things. And when they formed these spaces, they said, Let us, we need to have a name, a family name. And so some of these houses started forming names like Pendavis and Labasia and Ebony and Lavin. And these names became something they were proud of, much like my last name was Murray. They're very proud of their last names. And then from the names they came proud of, then they started figuring out how to express ourselves. And the expression of the house culture became the ballroom, which was between the houses would compete against one another, trying to find out who was the best one at that time. Again, this culture has existed under our noses for 40 years. So if house is the physical unity of the family formed, then ballroom would be the competition in the culture So let's talk about why this matters. Like I said before, ballroom has been influential in our pop culture for the last probably 30, 40 years, from our pop stars to the way we dress, to the way we dance, to the way we talk. But we've been there just enough that we were not noticed. Our invisibility became a a factor for us. When I first started in ballroom, ballroom wasn't something that you bragged and talked about. It wasn't until probably the last 15 years that people appreciated who we were. And then we find out in recent years that people who are a part of the house and ballroom scene has be created, become the influencers of pop culture. We are the cuffs of what we do. When we say certain phrases, certain phrases are following, we hear it on television. When we dress certain ways, people talk to us about it. What matters for this here is that we sometimes overlook this population. And when populations are overlooked, they develop their own systems. And so now as we're developing our own system, these systems are kind of colliding. And it's time for our voices to be heard. All right. So now here's the thing that I know you all know about. It's voguing, right? But this you didn't know, it came from us. No. But you thought Madonna did it in 1993? And that's where it popped out? No. Voguing became our art form that we were allowed to exist in mainstream. And it became the way we expressed ourselves and our talents. And it became the way we created our dance moves. So voguing came from House and Ballroom. So one thing about voguing that expresses our culture and allows us to exist is that once we know that language allows a culture to exist, there was a language of voguing. The movements tell a story, whether it was your struggle or your invisibility. So the first one we're going to talk about is hands. Hands tells a pantomime story. So instead of throwing fists in the 70s, individuals would start kind of like breakdancing or pop locking, but the hands kind of tells the story if we were talking about a book. Now, if Hands tells the story, the catwalk turns the pages. The catwalk is a sassy way that you go from one position to the other, or you move yourself from one position of stage to the other. It's the way you throw your hips. It's the way you throw your sass. Now, the third element is the duck walk. And for me, the duck walk is the hardest one because the duck walk requires a lot of leg muscle. The duck walk allows you to move up and down through a battle or through a de- de- the boundary of life. 
The last two of the five elements is the floors and the spins and the dips. So if the hands told the story and the cat walk turned the page and the duck walk took us from one phrase to the next phrase, the floor performance either ends the sentence for us and then the spins and the dips are the period. When we put all the elements together, you now have a full conversation. And this conversation through Vogue and our art form of dance has allowed us to express ourselves, whether you knew it came from us or not. It talks about our struggle and it talks about our invisibility. Ronald Murray is a community leader and member of the ballroom scene in Ohio. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Columbus, Ohio. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Columbus. Want to watch the full talk? Find Ronald's talk and more at ted.com slash TEDxShorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.